Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and welcome to my lecture on regular expressions. Uh, the book that we're using for this is uh, the uh, Severance Python for Everybody uh, book. Uh, typically, I'm teaching from uh, the Zell third edition intro to Python, but uh, while that's a great introductory book, it, it doesn't have uh, coverage of regular expressions. And our backup text is uh, uh, Severance's uh, Python for Everybody. And uh, they've got really good uh, coverage of regular expressions for beginners in that book. So that's what we're going to use for uh, this. So let's get started. So in computing, a regular expression, also referred to as a regex or a regexp, provides a concise and flexible means for matching s strings of text, such as particular characters, words, or patterns of characters. A regular expression is written in a formal language that can be interpreted by a regular expression processor. And we get a link here to the Wikipedia article. Let's bring that up. Okay, so regular expressions are uh, cool stuff. And they got a little bit of a slow start in uh, uh, the modern programming world. Um, they were uh, created uh, conceived of, uh, discovered, however you want to say these things, by uh, Stephen Cole Clean in uh, the 1950s. And they were popularized in uh, the Unix operating system, which uh, was introduced in the late 1960s. And um, uh, so there were... Uh, there were a series of uh, Unix utility programs that you could use for data manipulation and analysis, including uh, uh, awk, grep, and I believe also uh, sed, sed. Um, and I was a user of awk, and I really liked it. Um, because... Uh, I could take uh, text files and find what I wanted and do the manipulations that I wanted to do uh, in a really uh, easy way. Um, pretty shortly after that, uh, the uh, programming, programming language uh, Perl was introduced. And it has uh, a lot of uh, support for regular expressions. Uh, and it was a very popular uh, language. But um, what's really had the biggest impact for uh, everyday programmers like uh, you and me is that um, uh, everyday programming languages like um, Python and Java and JavaScript um, uh, were given regular expression capabilities. And that's where most of us encounter regular expressions. Uh, okay, as part of our programming uh, language. And it turns out that Python has uh, a really great regular expression uh, capability, and that's what we're going to be learning. Okay? All right, so let's shrink that for now. Okay? and go back to our slides. So, uh, what are regular expressions? Well, they're really clever wild card like expressions for matching and parsing strings. Um, now, here's some things that we can say about regular expressions. They're very powerful, but they're quite cryptic. Okay, when you look at 
a regular expression when you look at this uh, uh, pattern string that we're going to look to put together um, it looks pretty daunting right uh, it's got sort of a technical kind of a look to it and sometimes they can scare off the newcomer what we're going to we're going to take a, a gentle approach to it and despite the fact that you may be a, a newcomer i'm um uh, I'm optimistic that you won't be uh, scared off. Um, they're fun once you understand them, and that could not be more true. Um, they worry people in the beginning because they look kind of arcane. Um, but once you get the hang of them, uh, they're, a, they're a barrel of fun. They're a language unto themselves, right? So... Um, the regular expression, uh, uh, the pattern uh, language, is a language unto itself. It's a language for matching strings of text. It's a language of marker characters. Some people might call them meta characters. Okay, so uh, we're programming with uh, characters. And it's an old school kind of language in that it's very compact. Uh, okay, uh, compare it to uh, uh, the general parts of uh, Python, which are somewhat English-like, um, very easy to read, right? Um, it, it pretty much, uh, uh, you can read something and not understand it. Um, and not so with regular expressions. You you have to uh, look at them and kind of uh, think about them a bit. You know, uh, you need to uh, you need to get a lot of uh, um, yeah. You have to contemplate them, okay, uh, to see what their implication might be. And we're going to make that easier for you by uh, the way we introduce it. Okay, here's a real good um, a cartoon in which uh, somebody on the job uh, has to find some uh, text in a large file of text, and they come in and they use regular expressions. Uh, it looks like a, a, as part of the uh, Perl programming language, um, and they are treated like a superhero. Okay, and um, it, it has that kind of quality, okay? This is the kind of thing where uh, somebody comes to you and says, oh, I've just been given the job of looking through, you know, all of the logs from some piece of software, you know, to find how many people did this or how many instances of that do we have? And, you know, they look at you with a pleading look on their face and they go, I'm going to be at this for the rest of my life. Or, or perhaps that person's actually you, you've been given that job. Well, uh, regular expression capabilities are just the thing that you need to do that kind of searching in an automated way. Um, and something that could uh, you could do uh, kind of manually by searching through text with your eyes uh, that could take you days and days and days can be done in uh, seconds by a, a program that uh, where you've used the regular expression uh, features. So uh, superhero? Well, yeah, maybe. So uh, we've talked about these regular I I expressions, the fact that it's a pattern language. Well, uh, the pattern is expressed with these uh, characters. Okay, and we'll see how they work in a, a minute. But it turns out that each of the characters has a meaning. And uh, generally speaking, what we're trying to do is we're trying to match uh, bits of text. So we present a string of text or a line of text uh, to, uh, to the program. And then we, uh, the question uh, pretty typically is, uh, one, can you find a match to my uh, to my pattern um, in that string or line of text? And two, uh, uh, the other thing you do, other than uh, simply uh, matching yes or no, is that you can extract uh, bits of that text. 
uh, so that in your program you can you can use them. Oh, okay, so the rules um, uh, are made up of these uh, characters. So let's see, see, the circumflex matches the beginning of the line. So there's sometimes when you want to match, but only if you match from the beginning of the line of text. Uh, the dollar sign matches at the end of the line. So there are times when you want to match, but only if it's the very last part of the line or the character uh, string. Uh, the period is very flexible. It matches any character. Okay. Um, the backslash s, uh, the backslash is what we call an escape uh, character. Uh, uh, okay, so this, this says, uh, we don't mean an s literally. What we mean is we mean to be giving you a meta character, one of these uh, regular expression uh, characters. And what's the lowercase s? Well, any white space uh, character. So a space, a tab, those kinds of things. Uh, backslash capital S matches any non-white space uh, character. And this, uh, this uh, kind of convention of, for instance, having the lowercase s be white space for space and having the uppercase being the opposite of that. That's used in a couple of different ways in these, these uh, meta characters. Okay, now we have repetition uh, symbols. So uh, the asterisk says, Whatever pattern is immediately before this, um, w I want it to repeat zero or more times. Okay, we're going to learn about uh, some of the matching in uh, regular expressions is what we call greedy. Um, it, it, it will match the largest possible string. Okay, if we put a... Um, if we put a question mark after the uh, the asterisk, it'll be non uh, greedy. So it will uh, it will match the smallest uh, possible uh, string. Uh, the plus is one or more times. The greedy version. The plus the question mark is one or more times the non greedy version, and we'll explore those in a bit. If you put a series of characters inside of square braces, it, it's a set of characters. So it's going to match a single character uh, from that uh, set. So it's going to match an A, an E, an I, or O, or a U. If you, um, if you put a circumflex at the beginning of a set, okay, it's another meaning of the circumflex. It, it's negation. So this uh, says, I want to match a character in the set, and, and it's not x, y, or z. It's not in the set. Uh, the set of characters can include a range, or two ranges. So we say uh, we want to match uh, the range of characters from a to z, and the and the range of characters from zero through nine okay again we're only matching a single character and this is a a pretty big set of potential uh, matches okay the parentheses uh you'll remember i told you that uh, we can do two things uh um well we're going to learn about two things that you can do with regular expressions in uh, Python. One is you can simply look for a, a, a match. So the answer you get back is a, uh, a Boolean, true or false. Did I get a match? Did I not get a match? The other thing you can say is you can, uh, you can use another uh, version of the regular expression uh, commands. And you can say, uh, not only do I want you to match, but if you match, I want you to extract a part of it because I'm going to use that in my processing. So how do you tell 
how do you signal in the regular expression uh, pattern that you want to extract? Well, the left uh, paren says, start extracting here. And uh, the right uh, paren says, uh, stop extracting uh, here. So that's how you know that, uh, that uh, which parts you want to extract. Okay, sometimes you don't want to extract the, uh, the whole part. And we'll, uh, we have some good examples of that in the slides that follow. Okay, so how do we use regular expressions in uh, Python? Well, there's a module that we import. Okay, there's a lot of Python that kind of bolts on to the the underlying base of the language and uh, typically uh, contained in these modules. And so that the module for regular expressions is just called RE, lowercase r, lowercase e. Um, so before you can use regular expressions in your Python program, you must import the library using import re. Now, uh, typically, uh, when we do imports, there are kind of two things that we can do. We can import the whole package, or we can import one part of a, a package. Um, with these, with these big, um, with these big uh, packages, uh, like uh, math or re, uh, we typically just uh, import the whole thing. We typically just say import re. Okay. And then there are two versions um, of, uh, of uh, using regular expressions that we're going to learn about. One is going to be a search, and the other one is going to be a search and extraction. So what's the command for a search? Well, it's re.search. Okay. So you can use re search to see if a string matches a regular e expression, similar to using the find method for strings. It's more powerful than find because we've got all these meta characters. So we can, we can, we can come up with really succinct, you know, find just looks for substrings, uh, okay? Um, uh, re uh, dot search uh, looks for uh, you can look for some really subtle kinds of patterns because not only are you trying to match say some uh, values but uh, you can describe some really subtle conditions about what say surrounding those uh, values uh, in the text you're uh, searching. Uh, the next the the other thing we're going to learn to do is called uh, uh, find all re dot find all, and you can use it to extract portions of a string that match your regular expression, similar to a combination of uh, find to find the string, and slicing, uh, which uh, which you would do to extract uh, the string, or you could use say a substring, right? Um, find all uh one important part of find all is all okay it finds uh zero or more occurrences of the pattern that you're looking for and it because you can find more than one it returns a list so if you didn't find any the list is empty if you found one well the list has a single item if you found 25, well, the list ha has a length of uh, 25. Okay, and we're going to go through the details, and you'll see. Okay, so let's uh, here. What we're going to do is we're going to compare uh, a test we could do with find with uh, a test that we could do with uh, re dot search. Okay, so on the left side we say if line dot find so we're calling the find method of the line uh 
variable which is holding a string value. And we're looking for the text uh, from with a colon and a capital F. So we say uh, if line dot find is greater than zero, print line. Okay. Then uh, um, so so uh, if it was uh, zero, that meant that we didn't find any. If we found one, it would be equal to one. Now over here with the regular expressions, okay we're going to say first of all we have to import re okay because um, this is the formal part of python uh, but it's not automatically included you have to import it it's uh, what i call the one of the bolt-ons okay uh, and here's our test if re dot search and then you have to give it two um, actual parameters or arguments. The first one is uh, the pattern that you're looking for. Okay, and in this case it's uh, from. And this is a very simple pattern. The, probably the, the most um, uh, trivial kind of pattern that you can look for is just a string. No meta characters, uh, preceding it or following it or mixed in with it or somehow kind of modifying what you're looking for. You're just looking for a string like we were looking for over on the find. Okay. The second uh, actual parameter or argument is is uh, the search uh, target. It, it, uh, you know, what are you looking in? Well, here we're looking in line. Um, What's the result? Well, uh, re.search returns a, a boolean, true or false. So if we found it, it's going to return a true, in which case this is going to be true, and we're going to print the line. And if we didn't find it, it's going to return a false, and we're not going to print the line. Okay, so these essentially do the same thing. So... Um, uh, what would I say here? I would say that uh, these two approaches are about equal when you're just looking for a literal string. Okay, so if it's a pretty simple uh, search, uh, you might do just as well to use a uh, find. Uh, okay, but uh, pretty soon we're going to see where um, the regular expression version really begins to kind of outshine its... Uh, a plain old uh, Python uh, alternative. Okay. All right. So here uh, we're going to change the regular expression version. Okay. And we're going to we're going to use if you look over here right before the literal string from we insert one of the meta characters. The circumflex in this context means starts with. Oh, okay, it says I want to match the string from colon, but only if it's at the very beginning of of uh, the string that we're searching. In this case, the line. Uh, okay. Now, how would we do that with ordinary Python without regular expressions uh, imported in? Well. It turns out that strings have a method starts with, and so we could do that. So um, again, uh, we're still kind of tied. <laughs> okay, uh, ordinary uh, string uh, methods uh, on the left compared to regular expression. Uh, commands on the right well they do about the same thing so far uh, okay it takes about the same amount of code and uh, would we prefer one over the other mm. no I could see you going either way on this sometimes I would go with the version on the left because um, it's basic uh, a Python right it's not regular expressions 
Um, I tend to go with the version on the right because I want to use regular expressions as often as I can because I want to keep uh, developing uh, my expertise with regular expressions. Okay, and I, I want to keep, uh, you know, kind of savvy in practice, right? So these are about equal. I would prefer the one on the right because I try to practice my regular expression use whenever I can. Okay, um, but it's about a tie so far. Okay. All right, so now we're going to try to do something more challenging. Uh, this is the kind of uh, job that you might be given, um, you know, like I said, uh, search through a log. Uh, okay, maybe this is a, uh, maybe this is a log from your web server, okay, and you're trying to analyze that log text. Uh, okay, well, uh, what are your options? One, do it visually, okay. Uh, two, write uh, plain old Python without regular expressions to try to try to find the answers uh, without having to do it uh, visually. And then your third option is, well, uh, we have the regular expressions uh, module. We have the RE module. Use the RE module and uh, get done a lot faster. And maybe wind up with code that's easier to read and easier to maintain. And perhaps a little more efficient. Okay. So uh, here's what we're trying to do. We have these uh, log entries. Uh, okay. And these are um, exactly what kind of log this uh, came out of. Uh, perhaps this is an email log. Okay, this is, uh, this looks like maybe it came from an email server. Okay. And uh, maybe this is from an email header. I don't know where it's from. If I knew more about uh, uh, email, uh, the internals of email, I could probably tell you I exactly. But this is uh, maybe an email header. Okay, so uh, so we're going to want to try to go through this header or log, and we're going to want to analyze. We're going to look for certain things. Uh, okay, well, this, uh, it, this is just the kind of thing that, that you want to do. So here's what we're saying so, so far. We're looking for a match. Uh, uh, okay, so we're doing, uh, um, we're doing, uh, we're doing a search. That's all we've learned about so far. So we're looking for a match. We're doing re.search. Okay. Uh, and the, the uh, regular expression, the pattern string that we're looking for is circumflex, uppercase X, period, asterisk colon oh, okay well how, how would you read that well the circumflex at the beginning in this uh, context says we have to match from the start of of the line or uh, string okay uh, the X is literally we want to see an uppercase X why? Well, because all these things begin with an uppercase X at the beginning of the string. That's why we're asking for it. Um, the period is very general. Match any character. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the asterisk it says uh, many times. And then this uh, says followed by a, a colon. Now, does the colon have to be at the end of the string? No, it doesn't. Okay, one of the things we're going to see before we're done is if you have to match all the way to the end of the string, there would be a dollar sign after it. That's uh, uh, the meta character that says uh, has to match to the end of the, the uh, string. And of course, we don't want to do that because we know there are things after these... Um, kind of titles, whatever you want to call them, right? So this is what we do. So in fact, these things would all match, okay? 
X as sieve, X a D spam result, X D spam confidence, and content type message uh, body, they all matched. Okay. Let's do some more. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, what kind of problems can you have when you're trying to uh, fine tune your code? Well, uh, too few matches, too many matches, right? Okay. You want just the right amount. Um, so depending on how you clean your data, how clean your data is and the purpose of your application, you may want to narrow your match down a bit. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, so here's where we're uh, starting here. Uh, sorry, let's go back to where we were. So we had uh, circumflex x dot asterisk um, colon. Uh, and then we've got the same thing again. We're not showing we're not showing the same thing, but I think we're saying here's where we uh, uh, started. And what we see here is this match any character is pretty broad. Okay, it's very broad. Uh, okay, um, so right now we're going to match anything that starts with an uppercase X has any amount, any number of characters uh, and, and of any kind and, and, uh, and then has a colon and, and potentially has any possible thing after it. This could get us more matches than we're looking for. Okay, so we're going to try to fine tune it. All right, let's fine tune it. Well, it turns out uh, that all the things that we're trying to match begin with uh, uh, uppercase X and hyphen. So let's put X hyphen here explicitly. Okay, we're going to rule out things that don't have that hyphen. All right, well, that was a good move. Uh, okay, now instead of having a period which is, says, I want to match any character, um, we're going to say I want to match any non-white space uh, character. Now, what would be a white space uh, character? Well, things like spaces and tabs. Uh, okay, well, that sounds uh, good. How do we know this is non-white space? Because it's an uppercase S. Okay, if we wanted to match white space, it would be a lowercase s. Okay, and this... Uh, one or more times, which is the plus, which we've used to replace the asterisk, this uh, says, I want some characters in here, at least a uh, one. Okay, if we have an asterisk, it says, I may not have any characters in there at all. Okay, well, we know that everything that we want to match, sieve, dspam result, uh, plain, uh, okay, um, uh, uh, all of these things are um, um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Uh, sorry, guys. I got thinking ahead. Um, we know that they have some some uh, uh, characters, so this is going to allow us um, to. Uh, do the job. Now, oh, now, uh, <laughs> this is what I was thinking of that I wanted to say. These first two got matched. Why? Because they have a pretty color. We're seeing what matched. This third one with the plane, it didn't match. How do we know? Well, it doesn't have a pretty color for the matched uh, text. Why didn't it match? Well, because between the hyphen and the colon, there aren't only non-space uh, characters. It has internal spaces. So this didn't qualify, which is good because this, this looks like it's another kind of message altogether. And it just kind of accidentally began with, uh, with the X of hyphen. Uh, so by being more particular in terms of what 
uh, we're saying in the rule, um, we we got rid of this uh, third match, which which would have been a false positive. Make sense? Okay. So uh, that's the kind of thing that you do when you're building your regular expression. Uh, okay. Regular expression, when we use it, uh, we typically are talking about uh, the pattern. Okay, so the pattern is the regular regular expression. Uh, okay, so um, uh, that kind of approach where you you come up with it, and maybe you make it a little too general, so you match too many things. And then you you try to make it more specific, so you squeeze out the false positives until you get just what you want. All right, good method. All right, so now we're going to learn about uh, how to extract strings, uh, uh, substrings, from the strings that we're e examining. Uh, okay, and a lot of times we say that we match in a line instead of what match in a string because it's pretty typical to be reading uh, lines of text right we're in a for loop and, and we say uh, for line in input file and then for each of the lines and we do the regular expression uh, and so we're testing a variable a variable name line okay do we is that all we can test our lines of text from an input file no we can test any text string at all okay so re uh, search returns a true or false a boolean depending on whether the string matches the regular expression if we actually want the matching strings to be extracted we use re find all okay and um, I always like to look at the name find all to remind myself it's going to find all so if there are none we're, we're going to bring back uh, zero if there's exactly one we're going to bring back one if there's more than one then we're going to bring back as many as there are so what does find all return well it returns a list so uh, let's look at this. The regular expression that we're using here is that we're saying um, we have a single character and it's the set of the characters zero through nine. Okay. And then the plus says we've got one or more of them. Okay. So we're looking for a single digit or two digits or three digits or four digits. That's what we're looking for. So uh, over here, when we show the test, we show the import. You need to do the import. What's the string? My two favorite numbers are 19 and 42. So I'm going to expect to get a match on 2, 19, and 42. So we do a find all. And uh, we, print, um, we print the result. And what is the result? The result is a list with the things uh, that matched 2 19 and 42 notice that they are strings okay if we subsequently wanted to treat those as an int we would we would have to uh convert them with with the function int right or if we wanted to turn them into floats we would con uh, we would uh we'd use uh, the function uh, float, okay? If we didn't get any matches at all, we would just see the empty square brackets uh, down here, okay? So how could we test uh, if we got, uh, if we matched anything? Well, there's, there's a number of ways to test uh, how many things you have in a list, but uh, one, is the len function okay uh, here if we ask for the you know the len of y 
we'd get the answer 3. If we didn't get any matches, we'd get the answer 0. Okay, so when we use re find all, it returns a list of zero or more substrings that match the regular expression. Okay, so um, what are we doing here? Well, this time, oh, so we're going to do two different uh, tests on that same uh, uh, sentence. Uh, the first time, we're looking for what we looked for before. We're looking for uh, number expressions, one or more uh, uh, contiguous uh, digits. Okay, and we got two, 1942. The next time, we say, well, we're looking for um, capital vowels, A, E, I, O, or U, one or more capital vowels. Okay, let's look up. Do we have any capital of vowels? Well, M's a capital, but that's not a vowel. That's it. So we're expecting to get the empty list back. That's how we know that we didn't find any. We didn't find any, we didn't extract any. Make sense? Hope so. Okay. Now, here's a warning, okay? We have this thing called greedy matching, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you so your mental model of how the matching works is consistent with how it actually works, okay? And greedy matching says, uh, typically, when we ask for uh, zero or, or more characters or one or more characters or... Uh, zero or, or, or more, uh, you know, when we ask for a series of matches, the default is it's going to match as long a string as it possibly can. So it's greedy. It wants to match as, as long of a piece of text as it can. Sometimes that's more text than we wanted to match. Okay. So, uh, when that happens, we can we can put a question mark after that repetition uh, character that says, uh, "Don't be so greedy." So let's uh, look uh, here. So here uh, we're the uh, pattern that we're trying to match is this one over here that my cursor's over and you'll see that they've given us a bigger version here on the right so we can we can pick it apart so uh, the beginning of the pattern says the first character in the match is an uppercase f okay so match from the beginning find an uppercase f so anything that doesn't have that's not going to qualify and then it says uh we want one or more uh, characters of any kind, right? And then the last uh, character in the match, not particularly in the string, but in the match, um, is a uh, colon, right? All right. Now, sometimes that doesn't give us what we intend. Um, why? Well, because uh, let's say that the string, let me go back here, the string that follows the F has several colons in it, okay? It's going to match all the way to the last one. And you're like, oh, no, I just wanted to match through the first colon, right? All right, well, then how could you tell it that? How could you tell it, don't be so greedy in how much text you're trying to match? Well... Uh, here's what we do. We just uh, take the repetition uh, character, uh, the plus, the one that says one or more, and we add a question mark after it that says, okay, I want one or more characters, but the first time we match, that's it. I want to stop. So I don't want to keep going as long as I can possibly get. I'm, I'm going to be happy when I get to my first uh, colon. Okay, now how could this uh, help? Well, it can eliminate a lot of false positives. 
Make sense? Hope so. Okay. So, uh, again, we're talking about fine-tuning string extraction. Uh, typical approach is you come up with a, a pattern, a regular expression uh, pattern. Um, you might start off uh, pretty general. You typically get too many matches, so you get false uh, positives. Okay. If you're too restrictive, you get false uh, negatives. Okay. Uh, a better approach is to be less restrictive as you begin and then fine-tune just to the point where you squeeze out all the false uh, positives and then eh, maybe you tweak it one more time and you go, whoa, I, I got rid of too many things. Let's back that last change off. Okay, fine-tuning, that's what's going on. Okay, now, uh, one way that we can fine-tune the uh, the extraction is in how much text we're going to extract. By default, we get the whole match. Everything that matched gets gets extracted. Okay. Now, sometimes we want that. Sometimes we don't. So here. Uh, here's the rule. It looks like uh, this is, uh, again, this is probably an email header, right? And, and um, uh, it says, from Stephen Dart, uh, Stephen Dart, Marquard at UCTACZA. And then it, it has the uh, date. Okay, fine. Um, so, uh, what are we trying to get? Well, we're trying to do something with his email address. Okay. So, that's what we're generally trying to do. What we're going to do is we're going to fine tune it so that we get just the part of the email address that we're interested in. Okay. So, this says uh, one or more non white space uh, characters plus an at sign plus one or more non-white space uh, characters. Okay, and what did we match? Uh, we matched uh, the email address including uh, the domain name. Okay, and the, uh, the at sign. Okay, if that's what we're looking for, we're done. But let's say that we weren't interested in quite that big of a string of text. Okay. Um, well, here's what we do. We, what we do is we use parentheses and we put them inside of the match rule, okay? And they say when it hits the left of parentheses, it says, oh, start extracting here. And, and then it continues to extract and it extracts to the end. Uh, okay, so here what we did, well, uh, we said, that we wanted uh, to match uh, from. Okay. Did we match the from the last time? Uh, no, we didn't match the from the last time. So uh, this, is a, this is a new start. Okay. We're starting. Okay, we're going to match the from. Okay, so we're going to need too much uh, text. Right. So uh, that's fine. You know, but here we say, look, I, I want to match the from to make sure that I'm getting the right part of the string. But I don't want to extract it, okay? Because what I want is I just want the email address. So we say uh, start at the beginning from space, no extract, start extracting uh, uh, a series of one or more non-white space uh, characters and a, a, uh, an at sign a series of one or more non-white space uh, characters, right? So, for instance, this, uh, this is going to begin to extract when we hit a non-white space uh, character. And this is going to stop extracting when we hit a white space uh, uh, character. 
Okay, and so what did we get here? Well, we got just what we wanted, uh, the email address. Now, that's the same as we got before, so maybe we, we haven't gained a lot, but we will. Okay. So we're going to do some string parsing examples. Uh, okay, we, where we get uh, maybe in a, a refined way, maybe just a little bit more than... Uh, we get a little, a little bit more finely tuned exactly what we want. Okay, so uh, what if we want to extract a, a, a host name? Okay, well, it's actually possible to do without regular expressions at all. Okay, so the slide that we're looking at here is how will we extract a host uh, name uh, with all this uh, domain name stuff? How would we do that uh, without the regular expression uh, module? Well, we have some code here. And as I typically say in my lectures, uh, do as we say, not as we do. Uh, okay, it's very hard to write a slide for... Uh, lecture because you want to make the type as big as you can so the students can see it from the back row. On the other hand, um, you'd like it to be as expressive as it can possibly be. And one of the downsides of this uh, tension between uh, being, being expressive and being easy to read from the back row is that uh, courseware uh, developers will often use um, uh, not the best of variable uh, names. Okay, so uh, data, well, that's, I never, I'm not really fond of the, uh, of the term uh, uh, data because it's all data. <laughs> okay, so I don't like that name. Uh, uh, this ATPOS is the at sign position. Well, for me, it would be called at sign underscore position. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what we do is we go through here, we find the at sign uh, position, and then we work away and we use slicing in order to get what we want. Okay. It's a lot of work, right? Let's take a look at how we would do this with uh, uh, the RE module. Okay, so, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we're not, we haven't gotten there yet. This is how we would do it uh, with using, using the uh, split. Okay, so uh, we take the words and we so we split the line in into words on spaces, which is the default. And we say that the email is words one. Okay, we start counting from zero. So we say it's the second word that we found. Uh, we say uh, pieces email split on the uh, on the at sign. And they say we want to print pieces one. We start counting from zero. So we went to piece on the right. So we did do that. So he calls this the double split up pattern. Um, and I, I think that's a way to do it. Okay. Um, it takes a bit of thinking. All right. But it's a way to do it with uh, text uh, processing. And it, it's pretty clean. Like when you read through it, there are not a lot of tricks to it. Um, we've already worked with line uh, splits, and so that's pretty good. But we can do this with um, regular expressions. So how do we do this? Well, we do the import for RE, and then we say... Uh, we're going to assign y, which again is a pretty bad variable name. Okay, uh, find all, and then what we're we going to do? Well, we're going to begin with the at sign, 
immediately after the add sign, we're going to begin to extract. We're going to, we want a whole bunch, we want uh, a bunch of non white space uh, characters. Okay, zero or more. And then when we get the white space, we want to stop. Okay. And then uh, we print it. And what do we have? Well, again, we always get a list uh, back. So we get a list with a single item in it, and it is the host name. Pretty nice. Okay. So which would I prefer of the things we just saw? I would prefer the regular expression version because I uh, uh, personally, I use, um, unless it's, it's going to be, um, uh, what can I say? Uh, 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 unless the regular expression inversion is unnecessarily complicated, I typically use it because I just, I want to keep my regular expressions uh, strong. Uh, okay. All three of these we just uh, saw, the regular expression version, the double split version, and the uh, sort of the substring searching version, they all work. Um, they're all uh, pretty respectable uh, Python. But for me, um, I want to make sure my that I build my regular expression abilities. I'll probably always go with the regex version. OK. Uh, so how did that work? Well, uh, this is a non-blank uh, character. Now, I, I just want to point this out. A non-blank is uh, different than a non-white space. <laughs> OK. Non-white space, uh, um, uh, uh, there are some white space uh, characters that uh, are not spaces per se so this is a little bit different than the the backslash uh capital uh s but not much different so he wants uh zero or more non-blank uh characters uh, and then he wants to extract those and they have to be preceded by the at sign okay that's how that rule worked uh, okay, and then you can see uh, we have another slide here where we, it shows the parens, uh, and that's uh, the extent of what we're extracting. Um, an even cooler regex version. Okay, how do we do this? So, um, again, why is it cooler? Well, I think it's cooler because we always want we always want to roll out as many false positives as we uh, can okay so we say oh all right let's begin to match from the beginning of the string we know we begin with a from space then we want uh, uh, one or more characters then the at sign then we're going to get that match okay So it says, skip a bunch of characters, look for the at sign. And then it says, start extracting. And then we use the same rule we were using before. And we say, match many of them. And we say, stop extracting. One of the things I really like about these uh, slide, which uh, Severance has uh, put together, is that uh, he's doing uh, how can I say this? You can really see how these regular expressions are a programming language, right? Because really, uh, what does he say? Start at the beginning of the line. Look for the string from. Skip a bunch of characters. Looking for a at sign. Start extracting. Um, match non-blank uh, characters match many of them stop extracting well that narrative okay um it it sounds like a procedural program 
it sounds like a program it, to me. Okay, so when you really uh, kind of analyze the bits, uh, the way that Severance has here, you can really see of, yeah, it's a matching string, but with these meta characters in it, um, and the fact that they kind of work, you work your way sequentially through the string, you can see that it's a program. It's, a, it's an odd uh, sort of arcane programming uh, language, but it's tremendously powerful. Okay, so here is an example where we're looking for, um, we're looking for the header that uh, has to do with this, uh, we're looking for the one that it is x d spam uh, confidence and what we're looking for is we want to get the value uh, okay so we want to see if this is here and if it's here what's the value well how do they do it we have the in part import for re uh we're opening the text uh, file that has the headers or the log or wherever this uh, came from. Something having to do with email. Uh, we, uh, we create a num list, which is an empty uh, uh, list. Oh, okay. The uh, the variable for the file is called hand. I think that stood for handle. God forbid he would have typed two more letters. Okay, for so for line in, I wouldn't have even said in. So for line in hand, uh, line equals line r strip. Get rid of any extra white space uh, characters on the right side. So then we say stuff, I guess this is the stuff that we found. We do a find all. So we're looking to begin with this X D spam uh, uh, confidence uh, colon space. Then we want to start to extract. We will do, uh, we will, we want to extract uh, multiples of zero through nine or a period so uh, we're looking for a float okay uh, and then we stop e extracting okay so then we say if the length of stuff is not equal to one uh continue okay now this uh <laughs> this is not code that that i would um uh, I'd have you be uh, typing, uh, uh, using in my class because uh, continue is not something that we we even uh, learned about. So we're not. <laughs> I'm not even going to explain it. Okay, but he's saying that uh, he wants to say if he found it, then he's going to take the one that he found, which is in the first of the strings, the string index zero convert it to a to a float and then he wants to uh, 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 append it to the num list and then when he gets to the end at this point he has found all the log records for x d spam uh, confidence and then he prints the maximum he picks he, he prints the max of the num list which he has been accumulating uh in num list so we're saying that the maximum that we found is 0 0.9907 so probably spam okay and again i'm not going to explain how continue works because I don't think it's it's a structured uh, programming uh, uh, construct, and teaching you to use it would be kind of like teaching you how to smoke. If you're not a smoker already, well, well, then I don't want you to learn. Okay. Okay. Escape character. What if you want a regular expression a character, one of the meta characters, to behave just 
normally. Well then, uh, in most cases, you prefix it with a backslash. So for instance, let's say um, that we're trying to match a dollar sign. We're no, we don't want to use the dollar sign as a meta character to say, uh, essentially, I'm the, begin, uh, 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 I'm the end of the line. No, we're looking for a real uh, dollar sign. So in this case, we're looking for a dollar sign and then one or more occurrences of digits and uh, decimal points, the uh, uh, period. So how can you keep it, how can you get it to look literally for the dollar sign? Well, put the backslash in front of the dollar sign. That escapes it. That means I want to use it in a literal sense. Okay, so regular expressions are cryptic but powerful, or a cryptic but powerful language for matching strings and extracting elements from those strings. Regular expressions have special characters that indicate intent, the meta characters. And that is it. Now, before we wrap up, I just want to. Uh, I want to show you two resources that I think are useful for people who are learning about um, regular expressions. Okay. Uh, one, let's uh, bring these up. Okay, you remember in the browser we had gone to Wikipedia. So uh, that's a resource, right? You can look at that. Okay. Um, Another place uh, is a website called regular-expressions.info. And this is a great site uh, developed by, um, oh, actually one of the guys who, who wrote a, a very good book on regular expressions. And his name is Jan... Goyevertz. I'm thinking he might be Dutch. Uh, and probably not Jan, probably Jan. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is a great site. It's just full of tutorials and examples. And if, in fact, you want to learn more or if you're searching for a regular expression, this is a typical thing. You're thinking, hmm, I want to find a valid email address. I want to find a valid URL. How do I do that? Well, you can think about how to build it, or you can go do a search and find out what other people are using for it. Well, this is a good place to go. You, you can certainly search the whole net, but this is a good uh, uh, place to go. Um, regular expressions books, okay. The books that I used to recommend are the O'Reilly books. Okay. Um, so we've got uh, regular expressions. Introducing regular expressions is a, a, a beginner book. Regular expressions uh, cookbooks is by uh, Jan uh, Goyvertz. So um, that's the person who maintains that site I uh, showed you. Um, there's another, there's a book that I always like, um, Regular Expressions uh, Pocket Reference. It's about 100 pages long. <laughs> so the pocket reference is 100 pages long. Okay, so there's a lot of possibility. And then uh, this one, Mastering Regular Expressions. Uh, it's been around since uh, 2002, but it's still a, a good book. Uh, not a lot has uh, changed. Uh, this is about 600 pages long. So there's a lot to be known. And then the last thing I want to say about regular expressions is uh, my goal for you is, is to become a strong beginner, right? So uh, when you're writing a program where you need to match some text, um, if it's pretty simple, you just ought to be able to pick it out of your head, okay? Um, that's what the beginner can do. 
if it's more challenging, if you're looking for something that people look for all the time, like a phone number or uh, a zip code or a, a URL or a uh, um, proper email address, well, um, go and look what other people are doing. Okay, go look at the site I showed you. Uh, do a Google search. This uh, cookbook uh, book here, the Regular Expressions uh, Cookbook, uh, it just has a lot of examples of how to do things. So uh, that's a good um, a good place to go, right? Um, then, if you don't find it, there's typically in any organization a person who is really good at regular expressions. Um, I happen to know a person who uh, who works uh, oh we see uh, kind of the head of the uh, technical people at one of the high schools where I teach and uh, he's kind of their uh, strongest uh, tech guy very very bright guy and uh, what I would do when I couldn't find a way to write the regular expression myself uh, is kind of show up um, yeah, perhaps with some treats and and say you know what uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with a regular regular expression to find so and so perhaps I bring some coffee and some donuts uh, and I, I say I I want your help and um, there are times when people who are the expert will just uh, they'll say oh I already have one of those or they go yeah let's uh, noodle this out and bing 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 it's done okay so uh some expressions you could spend a very long time coming up with something that either you could find on the internet or in a book especially the uh, cookbook or um or you could get from one of your uh, uh, friends uh, or uh, co-workers who is a regular expression hotshot. And my advice is that really all's fair, okay? Uh, you want to make sure you're a strong beginner. You want to make sure that you know how to use the tools. You shouldn't be uh, shy about using regular expressions that are uh, have been... Uh, formulated by people who have more experience than you. Um, that's one of the ways that you can learn. So um, I have great aspirations for you in terms of uh, becoming a strong uh, beginner with regular expressions. As I showed you here on Amazon, there's a lot of books. There's even a couple books that I haven't had a chance to um, a chance to read these uh, first uh, couple here uh, look kind of introduced uh, oh they're uh, sponsored probably that's why they're coming up to the top but um, the best uh, sellers look like they're all the O'Reilly books and that's what I've been uh, recommending for a long time sorry I got fooled by the sponsored books all right that's all for regular expressions I'll say bye bye bye